Hello and welcome. In today's video, we will be covering the topic of database migrations. I'm gonna talk about TypeORM Migrations API. Also, I will show you the problem with TypeORM CLI as well. As usual, I put the source code into the description of the video. Okay, without any further ado, let's get started. The first step into creating a migration in TypeORM is to get rid of the synchronize flag in the config. Let's open the app module. Here, I use the factory method. Let's search for synchronization setting. I will delete the usage of config service and set synchronize flag to false. I don't want to allow anybody to bypass this setting. Let's also clean this flag from the .env file. Great, so now we're ready to create our first migration. The TypeRM package has useful command line too, and we will use it for that. In fact, we will create a few scripts for managing the database schema. Let's open the package.json file. Inside the scripts object, I will add a new key. I will call it migrations create. Then I will use the TypeRM package and its migration create method. The create method will add a new migration file with required methods in it. The method expects the path to migrations directory as an input parameter. I will save the migration inside the src slash migrations directory. At the end of the path, I will add an environment variable called migrations name. I'm doing that to add some meaningful names for the migrations. Without that, the files would have only a timestamp as a name. Before we can test it, we have to create a directory for migrations. It has to match the path we have provided in the script. Then inside the terminal window, let's type migration name equal initial schema, npm run migration colon create. The phrase initial schema will be the name of the file. As you can see, the migration has been successfully created. Type RM has also added a timestamp to our name. Cool, now let's open the migration file and examine it closely. The type RM migrations are casual TypeScript classes, but they have to implement migration interface. The interface has two methods called up and down. The up method is used for setting a new state of a schema. We can add, update or remove columns or tables here. The down method is for reverting migrations. There, we have to add instructions of how to restore the old state of the database schema. Both of the method have access to an instance of query runner. It's a type RM class responsible for running SQL queries. In general, there are two approaches to migrations in type RM. We can type plain SQL queries or use type RM migrations API. I will show you how to use the second approach. Let's start by creating a first table. To do so, I will use the create table method of a query runner. There, I have to initialize a new table object. Next, I will add an array of columns. The first one is called ID. The column has two properties required, the name and the type. For ID, I will use the usual ID as the type. Then there are some optional parameters we can set. For the ID, we have to set is primary and is generated and is nullable flags. Is primary tells the type ORM that ID is primary key is generated and generation strategy sets the ID to be automatically generated and finally the is null label sets not null constraint on the column. The second column of a recipe table is called a description. Let's copy the ID column and refactor it a little. Let's change the name to description and as a type let's set varkar. Then I will delete all flags related to primary key, leaving only a is null label flag. That's it, the recipe table is set. For now, let's leave the relation to ingredients. We will add it in the minute. Also, have in mind that all query runners method are promises. We have to await for result of the method. Now, let's create a second table for ingredients. 
I will copy and paste the ID from the recipe table. Both are the same. Next, for the name column, the properties will be similar to description. It will be varchar type and it will be not new label. The unit column is more interesting. It also will be a varchar type and will be not new label, but we will narrow possible options. For that, let's use the enum property. It will take the array of possible enum values. So here, I'm taking all enum values and I'm extracting them into the array. For the quantity column, I will set the type to be an integer and I will set it as not new label as well. Great, the second table is finished. Now let's think how to create one-to-many relation between recipes and its ingredients. One recipe will have many ingredients, so the foreign key will be saved into the ingredients array. Query runner has a add column method and I'm going to use it for that. The method expects the table name and the column object as an input. Here I'm setting the name of a column and the type. But that's not enough. We have to set the constraint in the database. For that, let's use the query runner's method called create foreign key. Pass the name of the table here and the table foreign key object. In the table foreign key constructor, I have to specify column name for the key, the column name from the second side of the relation and the table name of the second side of the relation. Optionally, I will set the onDelete flag to be equal cascade. We won't keep the ingredient without the recipe. And that's it, the script will create proper database schema. Now let's implement the down method. In the down method, we have to implement the opposite from what we have just done. Let's start from the bottom of the up method. Firstly, we have to remove foreign key constraint. To do so, we have to grab the instance of a foreign key. Let's use getTable method to access the ingredient table. The table object has a foreign key property. Here, we will search for our foreign key using find method and index of method. Great, after finding the key, we can drop it. Let's use the drop foreign key method and remove it from the ingredients table. Before creating the foreign key, we have added the column. Now, because we're going backwards, we have to drop the recipe ID column. Let's use the drop column method and pass here the table name and the column name. Finally, let's drop both tables. Let's use the drop table method and remove the ingredient and recipe tables. Now, when we have ready migration, let's add a script to package JSON for running migrations. I will call it migrations run. Type RM CLI has exported method called exactly the same migration colon run. But there is a small problem with this script. The type RM CLI is written in a pure JavaScript. It doesn't understand the TypeScript code. Our migration file has a TypeScript extension. To face this problem, I will add another yet script. I will call it simply typeorm. Then I will use test node and test config path packages to run typeorm CLI in TypeScript environment. The typeorm CLI comes from node modules slash typeorm slash CLI. Next, let's use the typeorm script instead of current one. Inside migration run script, let's add npm run type ORM. This will fire up our just added script. Then we have to add two dashes to pass additional parameters. Finally, type ORM migration run script expects from us a data source parameter. It is mandatory to pass here a path to data source class. You can think of data source as of a config dedicated to migrations. We don't have it yet. We have to create one. I will place mine in the src slash config slash type rm cli dot config ts file. So now the migration script is ready, but we have to create a data source. Let's add a new file in config directory. I have created a full data source before the lesson and I will paste it now. Starting from the top, there are required imports. Next, I use the config method from the .env package. This will parse the .env file. Next, I create an instance of a config service for reading the envs. 
Finally, I create and export the data source object. The structure is almost identical to the type where I'm config, but with one single exception. Here we have the migrations array. We have to add there all of our migration classes. Let's copy and paste the initial schema class. Great, now the data source is ready. Let's test it. For that, we have to start the database first. Inside the terminal window, type docker compose app. This will start the Postgres database. Next, in the new terminal window, please type npm run migrations colon run. As you can see, the app has started and there are plenty SQL queries logs in the terminal. That's a good sign. Let's start the app and try to save something. For that, type npm run start colon dev. Oh, there is an error. Yes, I have forgotten to remove the synchronization flag from the validation. In the last lesson, we have implemented variables validation during app bootstrap. You can check it here. Let's open the env validation file and search for db synchronization field. Then let's remove it and save the file. Yeah, now the app has started without any errors. Now we can open a Thunder client and create some recipe. Here I have an endpoint I used during the last session. The body contains some dummy data. When I click send, I can see SQL queries in the terminal's log. Finally, when I use the endpoint for fetching data, it returns the saved recipe. The last thing to do is to create a script for reverting migrations. That's possible scenario that after introducing changes to database schema, you will decide that you have to remove them. So let's open the package.json file and let's create a script called migrations revert. The logic will be exactly the same. We will use our custom type RM script and we will provide the data source object as an input parameter. The only difference is a method coming from the type RM CLI we will use. This time is called migration colon revert. To test it out, I have to stop the app. Then I can type npm run migrations revert. Again, you can see plenty of SQL queries running. After the script finishes, we can start the app once again. The app will start, but when we try to save some data, it fails. It's because the database has no recipe nor ingredients tables now. We have just reverted them. That's all what I wanted to present you today. I know that migrations are so difficult topic, so don't hesitate. Please ask me if you have any questions. In the next video, I will show you how to authenticate and authorize the endpoints. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, thank you for the watching and see you next time.